Hey everybody, Sam here. All right, what we're looking at is the Novation Impulse 25. It's an awesome keyboard. I have the 49 key version. And I picked this up at a pawn shop. Turns out the USB's broken. They got ripped off. It uh it has power, but it doesn't transmit any data. Let's see if you can see inside there. Maybe you can't. Basically, there you go. There's something missing in there and it's not transmitting MIDI data so we're gonna open this thing up and fix it I didn't see anything online and it was really disappointing but with some of my full cell education I figured why not I'm gonna give this a go and I'm gonna get this bad boy to work it's a sick keyboard and I couldn't see it go so alright so here we are we're looking at the back and I think we're fortunate it's pretty easy we got a couple of screws here on the sides that we gotta take out these ones are a little bit more exposed and easier. This it gets a little bit harder, it's dug deep. But the real hard ones are these. Alright, so we've taken off all the screws in the back. Nothing to take off in the front. We don't have to take off the knobs. Uh, I don't even think we have to take off that fader. I did that, but... Anyways, let's take this cap off. I'm just going to put the camera down for a second. And all we're going to do is lift this right here. Just lift the top off. You can see I'm already lifting it, but I want to keep... I want to break it, so I'm just going to put it down one second. Take this off. Nice and easy. Comes off. There are a couple cables still attached, but you'll get a look at that right now. Okay, so there you have it. Here's your keyboard on the inside. It's really nifty looking if you're really into this stuff. So, our problems could lie back there somewhere. Somewhere in here. Probably right under that cable. Let's see if I can catch it in there. That's what we were trying to get out. Right in there. We're going to have to fix that piece. Replace it. Oh no, you know what? There it is. I'm sorry. Our piece is right there. That silver piece. We're going to have to replace that. And it looks like they've had some issues with that. There's like... Alright. <clears throat> Let's go over something real quick. So here we have our main part of our board. This bottom piece. Now, we're going to have to take off these cables in order to get to the USB and maybe to solder it out, and replace it, and put it back in. So the way we're going to do that, these connections, these, they're really easy. At first they're intimidating. I didn't even know what I was looking at. But just be gentle and you'll see it easily just pops right out. So you'll get really close in there. You don't want to break the cable, so try to get your nail under. That's what I did. See that? I mean, it just easily just comes right out, you know? Not too bad. Sorry about my nails, I bite them. And uh, it's really easy. So I took a picture before I started disconnecting. And um, so I'm going to be able to tell how I get back to where I was. You don't want to. Let's see if I can get this one out. See, it's a little bit hard, but with a little bit of. Just be as gentle as you could, because you'll, you'll regret it if you rip one of these cables. You'll be sorry. But it's in there pretty tight. You know, I'm going to mess around with it, but basically that's how you would take it out. You know, if they didn't build them in tight, why would these things be as much money as they are? See that? Gotta love technology. It's these things that make your whole board work. Look at that. Got a little model number there. Cute. It's going to be a good picture. So we're going to continue taking everything out. Again, be as gentle as you could. Don't be intimidated. They're really easy. It's just like plugging in the phone line into, into your old 90s phone. So we're going to continue once I got these all out. Alright, after you've safely removed all the cables from the circuit board, it would be a good idea to save your progress, so command S. Just kidding. Alright, admire the board, and we're going to start taking off the screws that you see here, and then we're going to be looking at the circuit board from the bottom, and then we'll continue from there. Okay, now on to the good stuff. So we got our PCB board, we got to remove our USB connection port right there 
That's my oscillator, by the way. It's not complete. I'll go over that with you guys a different time. But for now, we're going to be removing this piece right here. Not really sure what this is yet. Never got a response, but I'm pretty sure it's nothing. We're going to have to desolder these points. Let's see if I can get it to show up clearly. There. So there's the two. There's the two big ones, which is really holding it in place, but it's the four pins behind it. Not, not the one to the left, but the one on the right, closer to the two lines. Those are the pins for the USB. So we're going to be lightly heating that up and then removing it and installing a new one. So all you're going to need for this is a soldering iron. And I've got one right here on the floor set up. It's not really good to keep it on the floor, but I can make it reach the table for now. So getting a little reckless. But I'm not going to be able to hold up the video and show you how to desolder this. So I recommend you guys look up a video showing you how to desolder and solder on a PCB board. I mean, any video will be okay, but it it makes a, it's a lot better if you watch it being done on a PCB board. And it doesn't matter if it's USB. If you see any of these metal pin, metal points, you could desolder any of those and remove any piece, like a capacitor or port or or chip. But they really, the chips are harder because, look, they're down. You know, they're really hard. But I'm going to put down the camera for a second, and we're going to take this out, maybe remove that nasty stuff too. So here we go. Alright, so we got our USB Type-B port replaced, and uh, just want to let you guys know, this stuff that's on the on the board, this nasty stuff, turns out the company put it on there to protect it, it's some sort of, I don't know, precaution or something for it heating up, but it's looking really good, I'm really excited, I think it's going to work, and all we got to do right now is screw it all back in, so I hope you kept your screws organized. I forgot to tell you guys, you should have taken a picture of it when you took it apart. Obviously, I got this on video, so, I mean, that's for this product, but any product, it could be a little bit of a different arrangement, so you definitely want to take pictures and keep your screws organized, and, uh, yeah, so the next time you see it, we're going to have this thing back together, and we're going to be testing it. Okay, so we got the controller hooked up. We're running Ableton Live 8. So this thing should work right upon it being plugged in with AutoMap, which I already have set up because I got the Big Daddy 49 right next to it. So here we go, my first jam session with my new Novation Impulse 25.
Sorry guys, you fell in my jacket. Sorry, you fell in my jacket, but there you go guys. We fixed this controller and it's working and I gotta say I am so happy because this thing's got auto map. This thing's got a lot of really cool functions that you're not gonna find on a lot of keyboards. The pads are sensitive, that's the arpeggiator going on. Uh, it's really beautiful. The knobs automatically sync with Ableton, so the top four macros will automatically sync. The transports automatically synced. Um, I haven't really delved into it much yet, but what what's really interesting is the all these things will trigger whatever is whatever track is highlighted. So you could have a track input armed, and the keys are going to affect that. But whatever track is highlighted is whatever the macros are going to be covering. So right now, the track I was playing is obviously covered. And whatever, that's this is a topic for a whole, so it's a whole another discussion. But there we go. I am satisfied as fuck. And I hope this inspires you to fix your own shit and maybe buy a broken piece of gear and fix it. And you know, it's it feels so accomplishing. And I really hope that this could this could really help you guys out because damn I am I am so happy.